Hey, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whenever you are, whenever you are on this amazing planet. So hope you're having an amazing day today. Good morning, good evening. Yeah, the sun's working well. Today we have a nice green day. As you see, Kusama is up 31%, Ave up 21, Leo 16, Compan. 31, Solana 11, Helium 15, Torchain 22, and most of the altcoins are in green, and also Ethereum is in plus 16, and uh, so we see a nice movement, but as we just recap and what's happened past one week, that mo most of the altcoins are in deep red, and let's see what's happened in the last month. That we see that AMP, AMP token, T Fuel, Quant, XDC, so few green and also Solana, but most of the altcoins are in green, especially the internet uh, computer. Uh, we see that uh, with this huge loss. So let's get into the news. Today we had a nice. Uh, technical analysis and also analysis. So ju just scroll back and watch that uh, technical analysis because it's quite interesting. We, we, uh, I talked about what's happening with the stable coins on exchanges and what uh, can we expect that uh, these stable coins starting to pouring in Bitcoin and altcoins. So some really juicy on chain and technical analysis you should definitely check out you find it in the description so let's check the fear and greed index what a surprise it's at 25 and it's an extreme fear i think from 26 it would be just fear so now it's uh, uh, just on the top of the extreme fear and as we uh, just see back that uh, in the last month the fear and the greed index spent uh, be, uh, between 10 and 12, so mostly in extreme fear category. And we know that extreme fear can be a sign that investors are too worried. That could be a buying opportunity. When investors are getting too greedy, that means the market is due for a correction. So let's get into the news. Our first news is Bitcoin biases of 30,000 uh, US dollar emit possibility of exit to mid 40,000 range. A successfully week of uh, culmination could see BTC price auction, to, uh, auction action target levels north of 40,000 US dollar again, uh, one analyst says. Okay. So there was a big uh, worry on 27th and 26th of uh, June. Uh, Bitcoin dropped to uh, 30,000 during the weekend. And we know that uh, uh, during weekends, the market is illiquid and big wares coming out and with huge shorts, they are influencing the market and they are uh, making other people worry. So that's happened in uh, this weekend. Also, I talked about in our today previews uh, video in the technical analysis video. Uh, crypto ad says that, uh, can't we just all agree to dump a BTC and nuke it to 26,000 uh, US dollar over the weekend to start on Monday, the next bull run with a V-shape recovery. So now <laughs> it seems that we have something good. Um, Bitcoin closed, uh, about 33,500, the 50 day exponential moving average. This is a good sign. And also, as we see, that uh, this could be this week of um, a kind of pattern. This is the distribution pattern. And also, there is some continuation with this leg up. And as we see this leg up, but many others saying that this leg, uh, leg sorry, leg down. This lag down should go to 20,000, but uh, uh, maybe it's over and this week of worked out pretty, pretty accurate. So uh, just some uh, <clears throat> stock to flow from plan B. 
Bitcoin short-term volatile, long-term trending up. He summarized alongside a comparative chart of Bitcoin 200 week moving average and realized cap. So we see the gray is the 200, uh, sorry, uh, the gray is the realized cap and the black is the 200 week moving average. And we are far above the 200 week moving average. So that's something that uh, uh, we can consider as a good sign. The next piece of news. Big prevailing sentiments signaling huge breakout, according to crypto analyst Nicholas Merton. I met Nicholas and Nata uh, on Data Summit. He's a really, really good guy. Uh, worth to uh, follow his channel, Data Dash. Okay, so just he analyzed investors, uh, Google Trends, social media sentiments, and all other, other things. And he says, when people are generally fearful, we get greedy. And when the general market is greedy, we get fearful. Basically, when the market's raging in this case, and everyone's uh, taking hate, hate and risk, hate and exposure to really care about the price as their pack, that's the euphoria that we want to sell into. The simple point is this, if whether you think this is a bear market, in this case, or a full swing mid cycle correction, the really interesting thing is that the fear and greed index doesn't read down here for very long. If we are moving up here, like we did here in May, August, or coming into the fall, all three of these points appeared at a time where Bitcoin and crypto markets were picking up. So uh, what is he uh, um, explaining in this video that when uh, we have seen so deep and so low uh, fear, uh, extreme fear uh, index extreme, in the extreme fear category. After that, we experience nice run up. So this is how you should prepare according the fear and greed index and this analysis. The biggest news of today. Billionaire vows to spread had Mexico's first Bitcoin friendly bank. Ricardo Salinas Pliego was his bank to the first in Mexico to accept Bitcoin. So uh, that, that was the news yesterday that uh, Ricardo Salinas is investing 10% uh, of his wealth in uh, Bitcoin. And now he wants to make the first Bitcoin bank, crypto bank in Mexico. And he's the first, third richest man in Mexico. Uh, so he revealed plans to open the first accepting bank in the country. Okay. So he sees his support for the widespread adoption of BTC, nothing that his bank is working to become the first in Mexico to accept the world leading digital assets. The comments follow a massive endorsement for, uh, for Bitcoin by Salinas, who started that by absolutely right to think of Bitcoin as the new god. So there was a tweet from Michael Saylor. If you are hoping to preserve your wealth for a generation, suggest you invest in Bitcoin by Ricardo Salinas. The strategy is simple. Choose the highest quality asset you can find and hold. Antonio Pompiano. Uh, says, here is a video of Mexican third wealthiest man explaining why he believes all fiat currencies are a fraud and he wants to hold Bitcoin over the 30 years. Incredible to see. Okay, Ricardo Salinas uh, responding, sure, I recommend the use of Bitcoin and me and my bank are working to be the first bank in Mexico to accept Bitcoin. If you need more details or information, follow me on Twitter. Account. So uh, you should definitely follow him. Okay, he's a founder and chairman of Grupo Salinas, a Mexico great conglomerate, Grupo Electrica, Book Club, Mazatlan, FC, Local Bank, Banco Azteca. And uh, Banco Azteca had annual revenue of 2.5 billion US dollar in 2020 operates in different uh, 
countries, Mexico, Panama, Guatemala, Honduras, and Peru. And we know that Panama also wants to join the crypto bandwagon, making Bitcoin as a legal tender. Okay, so uh, Salinas said he invested 10% of his liquid portfolio into Bitcoin last year. And uh, according to Blum Blumberg, Salinas' for, uh, fortune has risen by 2.8 billion this year to tag 15.8 billion. So if his uh, net worth is 15.8 billion and he invests in 10 percent that it should be something around 1.5 billion us dollars so let's visit our my twitter account and also i shared this from michael sailor and let's uh, just play this uh, there will be a subtitle it will be in spanish so you should just uh, read the subtitle I will make it big. Duty limited. Okay, let's make it big. And also, I will share the sounds. Maybe you speak. Spanish. I'm not, but maybe you do. Okay. Let's start. Yo sí me tengo mucho tiempo, mucho estudio, y pienso que es un activo que que debe de estar en el portafolio de cualquier inversionista. Es un activo que tiene valor, valor internacional, que se cotiza con enorme liquidez a nivel mundial y que por eso debería estar en cualquier portafolio. ¿no? Lo finito de Bitcoin, los 21 millones, es la clave de todo el tema. Por eso decía yo lo de Ethereum, ¿no? que mientras no tenga un, una cantidad finita de emisión, yo no, no les creo nada, man. O sea, si emitir más... Y, se deprecia tu, tu activo, ¿no? Sí. Es el fiat es un fraude. O sea, mira, yo crecí, empecé mi carrera profesional en 81. El peso estaba a 20 por uno. Hoy estamos a 20 mil por uno. A mí no me cuenta. Y eso es aquí en México, pero si lo hacemos en Venezuela o en Argentina o en Zimbabue, sí, las cifras pierden toda proporción, ¿no? Entonces, el fraude del fiat es una cosa inherente al sistema fiat y lo estamos viendo ahorita suceder en Estados Unidos la emisión monetaria se fue a la luna ¿me entiendes? entonces el dólar como moneda dura pues es un, una broma si hoy Ricardo Salinas Pliego viajara 30 años en el futuro y pudiera elegir tres formas de dinero activos bienes ¿Qué se llevaría? ¿Oro, plata, bolívares, pesos argentinos, pesos No, 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 no. Ni nada de fiat apestoso por ningún motivo. Ni un peso, nada. Ni un papel fiat, ni un papel fiat. Sí, definitivamente. No, yo sé los bitcoins. Unos bitcoins, sí. So, guys, did you hear that? So, this is the first richest man in, in, Mex in Mexico. And he just explained why he would invest in Bitcoin. And also he says that fiat is a fraud. I started my professional career in 1981. The peso was at uh, uh, 20 per US dollar. Today we are at 20,000 per US dollar. So this is a, a, a this is a 1,000 uh times in inflation that's all there is to know if we look at venezuela argentina or zimbabwe the numbers lose all proportion and also he says that uh dollar is a joke and and all these printed fiat currencies are inflating as as uh, a really really heavy way so this is a uh, great news and also you can check our uh farm launching as we launched our DeFi farm but we will dedicate a special video for how to use the farm so let's get back to the news so the next piece of news El Salvador to buy an, an estimated 135 million worth uh, US dollar worth of Bitcoin so there was a news yesterday that uh, Naib Bukele announced that uh, all adult citizens in El Salvador will receive 
$30 uh, uh, worth of Bitcoin for free after setting up their account on the government's cryptocurrency app. And then uh, there is uh, just some numbers that uh, uh, 4.5 million adult citizens or some, something around 5 or maybe 6 million adult citizens. It's also depending because a lot of, uh, a lot of um, El Salvadorians working uh, abroad uh, and that is why it's hard to estimate but Willie Wu on chain analyst says if all 4.5 million Salvadorians opt to receive the free Bitcoin it will instantaneously grow, grow the Bitcoin user network by 2.5 percent so this is uh, uh, what he means that uh, if it's 2.5 then I think that uh, we have almost two, uh, 200 million Bitcoin users at uh, the date. So it will increase 2.5. So it's a really, really great how to uh, increase adoption. And also so this airdrop, as I explained in the yesterday video, can make people rich as they are learning about Bitcoin. They are not spending this 30 uh, US dollar worth of Bitcoin, but they are starting to accumulate and also collecting more and more Bitcoin. Uh, quote, the user will be optional. Nobody will receive Bitcoin if they don't want it. Uh, if someone receives a payment in Bitcoin, they can choose to automatically receive it in dollars. So I'm really, really awaiting that, uh, getting some reports, uh, some statistics, statistics, how this crypto adoption will evolve and also what kind of other cryptos uh, will come beside uh, Bitcoin in El Salvador. So our next news is strong hands accumulating Bitcoin in massive amounts according to on-chain analyst Will Clementi. So you should definitely follow Will Clementi. It's a, it's a young guy and Anthony Pompiano is doing a uh, a podcast, a video podcast uh, uh, every week with him and, and talking about uh, on-chain things. And, and uh, we have a few nice insights here. In the last 30 days, long-term holders have added uh, 578,000 BTC to their holdings, while short-term have reduced their holdings by 521,000 BTC. So I think we talked about uh, this yesterday in the yesterday video. So uh, this is the short-term holders, the pink one, and the green is the long-term holders. And we see how they are just inverse to each other. And when uh, short-term holders are uh, buying long-term holders selling their bags to them and when short-term holders uh, selling long-term holders accumulating so this is a really really nice uh, correlation uh, inverse correlation but you see here bitcoin short-term holders capitulated yesterday they took losses on, on pair uh, with all major drawdowns in bitcoin history so this is where uh, you see short-term holders big uh, spike capitulation it means that they are uh, selling their coins and this happened i think uh, i don't know when was this written but maybe yeah maybe maybe on on saturday i think saturday or or the last week dump and we, you see that we had similar spike during the corona dump in march and also in the bear market and here at the top so, yeah, it's not at the top, but at the at a big drop after uh, starting to bear market. So, he think that uh, uh, short-term holders capitulated. The next chart, supply of stable coins on exchanges reached new all-time high, all-time high yeah, of 17 billion US dollars. Plenty of dry uh, powder to buy dips. No wonder Bitcoin below 30,000 was scooped so fast. So this is uh, in the in the previous video today, I talked about the stable coins, but mostly about USDT, Tether. And now we see these charts representing all stable coins. 
and all stable coins are, are uh, at all time high on exchanges, 17 billion US dollar. And you see this uh, black is the Bitcoin price and uh, red is the stable coin reserve on exchanges and is spiking. And it means that with this stable coins, uh, investors, traders want to buy Bitcoin and other crypto assets. So they are not withdrawing it to cold wallets. They are not uh, withdrawing to fiat. They are depositing on exchanges and they are preparing to accumulate buying more Bitcoin and more altcoins. The next piece of news. Here is when Bitcoin will zoom past 100,000 US dollar, according to crypto veteran who accurately called 50% drop. So crypto veteran Bobby Lee says Bitcoin's recent 50% collapse from all time highs doesn't mirror market tops of the past. Okay. So he predicted the 50% drop in BTC once it approached the uh, 70,000 ish levels. Okay. And discussing when it can uh, pass through the six figure mark. I think we are going to hit it either in the late summer or the fall of this year to get past 100,000 US dollar and then it's going to zoom up really fast. Okay. So then we, if uh, we are following uh, least path, that uh, we will buy over 200% from current prices within the next uh, three, five months. Okay, and uh, I will give another question. When we hit the bull market, how do you know it's an all time high? How do you know it's really peaked out? If the price doubles within a day or two days, somewhere around one or three days, if the price doubles, that's when it runs out of steam and that's going to be the all time high of this market cycle. The important thing is people always ask, how do you know when we hit the all time peak. The peak doesn't happen based on FUD and bad news. So the takeaway here that the peak, uh, if uh, Bitcoin price peaks, then there is no FUD and bad news. And also you see that price doubles in a day or two days and then just uh, losing momentum and, and uh, it stopped out. Uh, quote, when there is cause for a regulatory crackdown, that's usually the panic sell. That's never the end of the peak. However, the true end of the peak is usually from not enough steam. It's when the price goes up too fast and it just can't sustain it anymore. So that happens when the price doubles or increase 50 to 100% in one or three days, I would say. So you should definitely follow when the Bitcoin price uh, increase uh, 50 or 100% uh, in a day or uh, in just a, a, a few days, then uh, the price can top out and you should be very, very careful. So this is from Bobby Lee. Bitcoin Taproot logged in to improve privacy and introduce smart contracts. So guys, you should definitely learn more about this taproot uh, uh, because this taproot upgrade will be huge for Bitcoin. And also I think this will have not just this uh, uh, run up and bull cycle that uh, uh, these analysts and, and uh, experts are talking about, but also adoption of Bitcoin. With taproot, different spending conditions may look identical in the most common case. And this is great because it reveals less information about users and it also improves, improves efficiency. It taproot extends Bitcoin script capabilities in ways that make certain things cheaper, especially more complex applications like multi-sig and layer two things and somewhat more private by often hiding what the exact spending rules were. In the middle long, see an increase in Bitcoin 
smart contract usage, enabling use case uh, cases like inheritance and delegation in company spendings. And the best part is that by looking at the blockchain, we will not know about that. So this is huge. And as we will have smart contracts on Bitcoin, I think this will be huge. And also this will drive Bitcoin adoption and the price time. Bitcoin will go all the way to 160,000 this year, says Celsius CEO Alex Mashinsky. Alex Mashinsky is a really, really uh, great guy. I met him in New York at uh, Consensus a few years ago. So you should definitely follow him and also using Celsius uh, products. When you go too high, too fast, you are bound for a correction. You can see my tweet in both March and February saying we are going to have a crash. We are going to have a correction. I predicted 30,000 uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is like a spring. We uh, stretch it too much and we put too much leverage. Too many people got greedy. Quote, if the richest guy in the world is willing to exchange a Bitcoin for a Tesla, you have to ask yourself who is getting the good deal. The minute you buy the Tesla, it's worth less than what you paid for it. But Bitcoin is going to continue to increase in value. So that transactions is good for Elon, but it's good. It isn't good for you. So the car, uh, car cars always are um, depreciating assets. So they are value. Uh, depreciating uh, with time, but Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin price increases uh, with time. So uh, you should definitely uh, be careful if you are spending your hard earned Bitcoin for a Tesla. And uh, I think uh, maybe in this also he he he's, uh, he just called Elon Musk is a tourist in crypto. So just uh, coming here, getting some attention, and just so it's a tourist. Yeah, but you should definitely check out this video here. Okay, so the next piece of news about Sushi Swap, Sushi to launch full product suite on Harmony, Harmony One protocol, and revealing plans to bring its full decentralized finance product stack onto the blockchain with a com accompanying incentives designed to drive greater participation. Meanwhile, decentralized exchanges. DAX uh, competitions continues to swell. Partnership expansion uh, accompanies 4 million US dollar incentive in campaigns. So great to see that uh, Sushi Swap also uh, adopting more and more uh, protocols and blockchains. So this is a really, really nice moment. So, guys, uh, we talked about uh, the crypto prices uh, today. Uh, we will come back with some uh, CoreOnX updates about our DeFi apps. And uh, yeah, so let's just check the price, but we will not make any analysis because we made it previous uh, in the previous video. So just check Bitcoin. We see, let's check the four hourly. We see that we are just uh, ranging in this channel and uh, Bitcoin should break this 35,000 level to go up from here and targeting higher levels. So it's stuck in this uh, horizontal level and also there is the upper trend line of this channel. So definitely should overcome 35,000. Uh, by now, Ethereum seems to be really good. Uh, broke up from this falling wedge and now also broke uh went about uh, 20,000 and now uh, about 20,100 there will be some resistance here around let's say at uh, 2 2140 and then 2200 uh, so that will be the levels that you should definitely watch all other altcoins are green, so it's a really, really nice day to start the week. And guys, uh, also uh, this 
uh, FUD with the options expiry is over. On Friday, a um, lot of uh, options expired. That is why that was a dump on Friday and Saturday. But now we started the July, and July used to be a really good month for Bitcoin. And also there was uh, news that uh, UK uh, financial authority Japan Binance to operate uh, in the UK. And this is why, because Binance uh, allows customers uh, the leverage trading and uh, UK don't want to allow uh, the citizens to trade on leverage. And that is why uh, there will be a Bitcoin, uh, there will be a Binance UK company and they already fight their, um, their um, proposal for uh, for getting this license. So I think that uh, there is uh, no issue to Binance uh, because this news and as we see that how, what Binance is doing, uh, it's, yeah, it's not, it's not a uh, lot of, lots of movement, but consolidating in this range. So uh, that was uh, another big sell when this news came out um, during the weekend. So guys, uh, Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed the news. Uh, we'll keep you updated. Also, we'll get back tomorrow with other news and we'll upload some um, tutorials for uh, about the Corion X farm and DeFi products. So, see you tomorrow. Enjoy your evening.